Chapter three, tap into yourself. I remember the shock when I first started taking advanced painting courses during my undergraduate studies. Before I went to art school, I had only studied in a typical American educational environment, diligently reading the required texts, taking notes, studying, and following the teacher's assignments. Suddenly, I was in a class where no one was telling me what to do. For the first time in my life, it was up to me what to paint and how to paint it. I felt like the miller's daughter in the fairy tale who was put in a room full of straw and told to spin it into gold. I had absolutely no idea how. And the funny thing was, hardly any of my teachers were much help in any of this. They couldn't teach me how to tap into myself, into my own ideas, and start a body of work or create a connection to my creative source. It is not at all surprising to me that the majority of people have difficulties being creative. I've learned that encouraging innovative thinking can be taught, but most of us were raised in an environment that favored order, uniformity, memorizing existing information over originality, inventiveness, and creative chaos. Out of necessity, I became a keen student of creativity and the creative process. I began to observe and analyze how creative projects are born, developed and nurtured, and also to learn what blocks or stifles our creative brain. I studied interviews with innovative artists and ingenious thinkers of all types, noting how they worked and what they said about their processes. I observed myself carefully in the studio, noting what worked and what didn't. When I taught, I paid close attention to the differences in creativity in children and adults, and they are vast. I noted at what age the natural inborn creativity that I saw in young children dropped off. I researched different educational systems such as the schools in the Reggio Emilia region of Italy and was astounded at the creativity that can emerge when it is consciously cultivated. What I learned has had a remarkable impact on my creativity. Now instead of fits and starts in the studio, I have an unending stream of creative ideas and projects. So many, in fact, that I used to worry about having time and energy to bring these into concrete form. This enormous flood of ideas that came into my head. Now I write them all down and trust that the really important ones will be there when my time is right, or when the time is right. I have noticed that an idea may come to fruition years later, but it will take a different form than I had originally imagined because I have changed. I suggest that you too write down all of your ideas, no matter how far-fetched, simplistic, or ridiculous they may seem, no matter if you think you don't have the time, the money, or the resources for them right now. This is a way of acknowledging your creative mind, for giving the ideas to you and encouraging it to generate more. Know that there will always be more ideas than you can execute and simply savor that you have such a fertile, active mind. Over the years, I have shared what I have learned about the creative process with artists who study with me. They too have learned what an extraordinary difference it makes just to have a deeper understanding of the normal phases of the creative process. One of the biggest breakthroughs for me One of the biggest breakthroughs for me was to understand and embrace what I call the wall. No matter how many times I have faced it and passed through it, the wall still catches me unaware. At that moment, that hour, that week, or that day, when you look at a project you've been laboring on and are convinced that it is utterly irretrievable or unsolvable, <laughs> perhaps even worthless. You came to believe, or you come to believe, that all the work you have done was for naught and you'd better just give up this whole business of being an artist because your work is no good, you will never amount to anything, you are wholly incompetent, 
or totally lacking in talent or creativity. The initial bless, blush of enthusiasm that started and fueled the project is dead. Where did the fun go? It's a horrible, horrible feeling. And believe me, I have been there many a time. And yet, this is a totally, completely, utterly natural stage of the creative process. Moreover, it, as unlikely as it may sound, there is a tremendous gift here. For when you get to this point, as comfortable as it may be, it means that you are about to make a breakthrough in the work. This breakthrough will impact not only this one piece or project, but also all your work going forward into the future. This is where you truly grow and evolve as an artist. However, you will be unable to move forward without some trust in this process. The first time you face these feelings, it will take a tremendous amount of faith to keep working in spite of them. As unreasonable as these self-doubt thoughts may appear to you as you're reading them now, when you are in the midst of the wall, you feel like it's the absolute truth. This is where your commitment to practice comes in. This is where your community of support will carry you through. You need to step outside of your own thoughts and ego and move forward. Allow the work to speak to you and tell you what it needs. Sometimes this will mean sitting quietly and reflecting on the work until a way becomes clear. Sometimes there will be a dramatic shift in the work. Other times a subtle change is needed. You may need to seek outside ideas and inspiration to know what to do. A visit to the museum or library, a talk with a friend, a movie, a book, a walk in nature may jiggle something inside you that provides the next steps. Trust that the answer will come, but please, 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 please don't believe the negative voice that tells you are, you are worthless and your work is meaningless. Remember that the voice is not all of you. It is just a portion of your personality. Observe the part of you with compassion, but don't let it run the show. So if you want to read the whole book, you can download it. Um, there's a link below. You can get it as a free PDF if you want a hard copy. There's also a link to purchase it on Amazon. And I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter. And if you missed the ones before, you can just click on the playlist and listen to the previous ones. Have a great day, creative week. And let me know, have you noticed the wall? Have you come up against it before? I mean, what does that mean to you? Does it mean anything to you when I say that? Do you ever have those negative thoughts? Do you ever, have you ever actually listened to them and believe them? Or are you one of those blessed people who just thinks everything you do is wonderful and never worries about anything? Many of you, um, I do hear, <laughs> I do hear from people like that and I think that's wonderful. Um, but a, a lot of people I know do face this. And I'm not just talking about people who are just starting out, people who have been working for years, these thoughts still come and haunt us. So it's something that you just get used to and you become more comfortable with. So let us know in the comments below. If this was helpful for you, will you please share this video with somebody? I want everyone to benefit from this. I never want anyone to be stopped in their tracks by that negative voice or by not understanding the natural stages of the creative process. And of course, like it if you like it. It's very helpful to this channel and for getting this information out to other people. All my best.